A Memphis megachurch is backing one of its pastors who was accused of sexually assaulting a 17 year old back in the 1990s. Andy Savage is the name of the pastor in question and he is currently employed at High Point Church, which again, has decided to stand by him despite these terrible allegations. Now, the allegations were from a woman by the name of Jules Woodson, who said that she was assaulted by him when she was only 17 years old and went to the same church as him. He was a youth pastor at that church at the time. The woman identified as Jules Woodson said the incident with Savage occurred in 1998 when she was a senior in high school. One night, Savage offered to drive her home after a church event, but took a detour without her consent or knowledge to a deserted forested area. Savage unzipped his jeans and pulled out his penis. He asked me to suck it. I was scared and embarrassed, but I did it. I remember feeling that this must mean Andy loved me. He then asked me to unbutton my shirt, I did. He started touching me over my bra and then lifted my bra up and began touching my breasts. After that, apparently he panicked and realized that it could get him into a lot of trouble. He got out of the car and, and begged her to never tell anyone, asked her to take this to the grave with her. And then she it really hit her that what he had done um, was wrong. Woodson said that she was consumed by fear, shame, anger and hurt. She decided to tell church leaders about the alleged assault, but they engaged in a cover up to protect my abuser and the image of the church. So he admitted to doing what he did and he says that he's super remorseful about it. But that church um, you know, brushed it under the rug and he was no longer working there. Later, uh, he gets hired by High Point Church and uh, apparently that church is not worried about these allegations at all. Um, let's go to graphic 74. Uh, a direct statement from the mega church was on behalf of the elders, pastors, staff and trustees of High Point. I want to affirm that we are 100% committed to Andy Savage and his continued ministry at High Point Church. I 100%. was and remain, uh, Oh, yeah, okay, so that's what uh, was said about the situation. Another part of the statement was this information is not new to me or to our leadership. Mm -hmm. Basically, yeah, if you think this is a, serious thing that we should consider already considered it don't care yeah you know yeah well i mean it certainly fits in with a pattern of behavior across the country and across the world for the past few decades i mean they almost never seem to actually care when it would be relatively easy to throw some of these people to the side to show i mean if you're they want to demonstrate that they are you know morally right in some cases morally superior you've been given opportunities to do that they just choose not to take them unfortunately uh, do you have the thing about the other sexual assault uh, go ahead you can talk so about it so apparently uh, church uh, affiliated with high point church Back in 2016, they were accused of covering up alleged cases of sexual abuse by Chris Carwile, a former youth pastor who worked for a different church that was affiliated with High Point. So I guess after the first time, if you were gonna do anything, it would have been then. Second time, maybe it doesn't bother you as much. You know, the sexual assaults and the, the you know predatory behavior within the Catholic Church was such a big story and you know really tainted the image of the Catholic Church. And I feel like we've learned nothing from it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just a small story under the radar. I don't even remember how I came across it, but it was just shocking how brazen, you know, High Point Church is in regard to these allegations, which again, uh, the pastor, Andy Savage, has confessed to. But he's saying, well, I'm remorseful and you know, I uh, asked for redemption and Jesus gave me redemption, so it's, it's fine, it's fine. Yeah. I wanna give you uh, his exact statement. He said, I was and remain very remorseful for the incident and deeply regret the pain I caused her and her family, as well as the pain I caused the church and God's kingdom. He also alleged that he called the victim's family and asked for forgiveness and the victim said no. That that did not happen. Um, oh, it didn't even happen. Yeah. That would have been weird if it did. Um, yeah. So what's interesting about this is, uh, you know, while we've been talking on the show today about this moment that we're in socially, where we're trying to fix some of these long-standing issues where women are harassed and assaulted, uh, people don't listen, don't find out about it. When they do, they don't do anything about it. I mean, there there have been in Hollywood, obviously, stories going back decades, but. I would say that inside of churches, that has really been the most egregious one. And you had these huge investigations, obviously, Spotlight is a great example of a movie going into some of that. 
and a lack of consequences. But even now that the rest of society is starting to catch up, the church, which has been dealing with this for far longer, still doesn't really care. And I think no, I, I go ahead, finish because well, I, I would say I think one of the, one of the problems. Look, I don't know inside of this particular church. I mean, there's two ways that this guy can go down. Either the leadership can throw him aside, or the people out on the you know in the pews could turn against him. They could choose to do that, and it looks like the news is gonna be out there. I don't know those people, I don't know the church, maybe they will, maybe they won't. But I suspect that they won't because again, like I pointed out before, we're terrible at you know identifying the greatest threats to us. We're also unfortunately, regardless of everything else about humanity, we're largely tribal people who believe that our group, however we define it, is right and moral. Our leaders are there for a reason. Um, and we, we all too often don't question, they're 100% behind him. You should never be 100% behind anybody in the world. You're not 100% behind me? No, I'm like 97% behind you. Yeah. But you're also a human, and I am exercising human judgment in assuming that I don't know everything about you. You know a lot, but let, I know let, a lot. Yes. Let me let me uh, agree with half of what you said. You are right. There is some portion of the population that is tribal in their thinking, and they will protect their own at any and all costs. And I think that that is incredibly um, evident with right wingers. Okay, so hear me out on this. I'm not trying to make. I don't this think just the right wing, political. by the way, but mm, I think so. And the reason why yeah, I say it crosses that crosses over into like look at people's like obsession about sport, like like sports teams and stuff like that. Like we, it doesn't have to be a political identity that we are tribal in regard to. It can sure. all too often be. It can be religious. It can be all sorts of stuff. Okay, so that's fair. But going back to the political aspect of it, because I think it is important. I mean, look at how the right wing protect their own. It happened with Roy Moore. It happened with the Catholic Church. It certainly happens with churches today, which is evident from the story that I just presented you guys. But you don't see the same thing on the left when it comes to these issues, okay? Mm -hmm. With the left, if someone wrote a blog decades ago that might seem misogynistic, people on the left are like, oh, no, 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 we, re we reject you, we reject you, bye, bye, we don't like you anymore, you're done, well, you're in the, done. In okay? the case of someone like, like Woody Allen, he was protected. Now, all the people protecting him weren't necessarily uh, liberals or anything like that, but a lot of them probably were. Woody Allen is in a significant position of power. Um, I know that's true, but I would, I would argue that this mega church pastor is probably pretty powerful inside of his community too. Maybe, I think that maybe. in this I just moment, think there's a difference. I think that the I, left I'm not saying there's not a difference, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that it's not a 100% difference either. I think that it, there has been like Fox was sort of forced to get rid of some of their hosts. Uh, liberals have been much more willing, I think, to come to groups. Oh, with they fold immediately. Totally, yes, yeah. uh, and and should in most of those cases. I agree, um, but I, I think that we don't all suffer from this at the same to the same degree. But I do think that it's a flaw of our species that mm -hmm. we assume that if we are a part of a group, we're a part of that group because it's the right thing to be and the right thing to do. I, I see it all around me. I don't know. It's interesting. I don't know. I, I guess I have a very different perspective. I think that, you know. There are some people with a certain ideology that are willing to reject their own immediately as soon as there's a little bit of controversy mm -hmm. or you know a little bit of backlash, and that's concerning because while I agree that the majority of people who have been accused of sexual assault and rape and it's been proven should be rejected and should face the consequences. I feel like there have been a number of cases where someone, you know, made a joke or or wrote something that was, you know, maybe ill advised at the time, mm -hmm. and they immediately get rejected by um, people that they shouldn't be rejected by. But nonetheless, that's well, just I, my that's just my take on it. I, I would argue that. Well, I think there's a lot of different forms of this. I think that inside of the church, I think one of the reasons you've seen it so much is that there's various forms of power. But for some reason, religious leaders, and not just inside of Christianity, but in a lot of different groups, are given a sort of power that seems not commonly necessarily, but more commonly to lead to these sorts of abuses where it, yeah. it enters into relationships and sexuality and stuff like that. I don't know exactly why that is, but. I mean, we've been seeing this since before we were born. These are the sorts of stories coming up. Yeah. Well, I hope that the people who go to High Point Church are aware of what's going on, and that no one leaves their daughters alone with Pastor Andy Savage, because I certainly Look, would not. Unfortunately, if if history is any indication, the person that's likely to be hurt as a result of this is the woman who told the story. Yeah. I mean, how many people have been ostracized from their community, especially religious communities, because they brought allegations against popular 
leaders. I know, I know, and um, you know, hopefully the victim here isn't facing uh, any backlash at all. But you're right; uh, that is usually the the way things play out. If you become a member of the Young Turks, you'll be saying, "You know, I'm like a smart person." So do it right now. Tytnetwork.com/slash/join. Get the whole Young Turks show every day.